Coming up on Friday's edition of the Locked On NFL podcast, Aaron Rodgers wants New York, but does New York, all of New York, want A-Rod? We'll talk about that and a lot more on today's edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Friday's edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast with David Harrison filling in for Chris Carter. I am Q Myers. We're excited about today's show, as we always are. We'd like to thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure you get the latest edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. And today's show is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. The Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love to drive. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Dot com And David, thanks so much for uh, sliding in for Chris Carter, who's out doing well Chris Carter type things on this Friday. But uh, we're ready to rock and roll with you. And, you know, you brought up a really good uh, a really good little nugget when we were talking about the show and trying to put everything together, figuring out what direction we were going to go. And you you talked about Aaron Rodgers. And I know a lot of folks immediately would be like, ah, Aaron Rodgers, I'm so tired of the guy. Make a decision. Well, he actually has made his decision. He wants to go to New York. But you pointed out how all the Jets fans, for one reason or the other, aren't really excited about possibly getting Aaron Rodgers in New York. So uh, just tell us a little bit about that again, and let's break it on down on why they might not want Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it, look, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy because uh, basically getting ready for the show, so I was looking, I was like, you know, has, has, the, has the trade happened? Like, that's kind of where we are with Aaron Rodgers is, right. you know, the Green Bay Packers are already talking past tense about him and how they're moving forward with their franchise. A-Rod came out of the darkness and, and realized that he was going – uh, to the New York Jets. And so all that is pretty much set. They've already signed some Packers players that Aaron Rodgers gave them their shopping list for. So we're just waiting on the deal to actually be announced and be final. But Mike Greenberg went on the McAfee show recently and and was talking, obviously, about Aaron Rodgers. He's a, he's a Jets fan uh, and all these things. And he was actually the one who revealed that in his timeline, Jets fans are coming at him kind of dogging the move to bring in Aaron Rodgers to the franchise. And it was frustrating him because when he, as a Jets fan, look, looks at the last stretch of, of Jets quarterbacks and who they've had, what they've had, what they haven't been able to do as an organization, he can't, for the life of him, understand why Jets fans, any Jets fans, even if it's a, it's a small portion or or you know 40% of Jets fans, would not like the idea. But then on top of it, doubling down, Joe Namath, arguably the, the greatest quarterback in Jets history, right? has already approved and blessed the, the wearing of the number 12 by Aaron Rodgers if he becomes a New York Jets quarterback. And now apparently there are Jets fans in Mike Greenberg's timeline telling him that if Aaron Rodgers wears the number 12 for the New York Jets, they're not even going to watch the team because that's lies. just sacrilege All lies. and could, could <laughs> never <lies>. happen. <laughs> yeah. Fans um, are so funny, man. Fans are hilarious because those are definitely liars, right? I mean, look, they're going to watch. They've been watching all the bad quarterback play for years in New York. So they'd watch Aaron Rodgers. But I'll say this, yeah. David. I can totally understand why they're frustrated and they're exhausted by this whole, you know, the whole way this is played out. And really, this is not Aaron Rodgers' fault, even though everyone's going to point at him and say he's a diva, he's this, he's that. This is all 100% the Jets' fault. They did way too much. They went out and rolled out the red carpet for the prettiest girl at the prom. And just to find out that she has more things that she needs done. And oh, by the way, her ex has some uh, stipulations as well that you have to live by before you can get her. And so that's part of the problem, too. But this is all 100% squarely, in my opinion, on the New York Jets. They've done way too much in this scenario. Yeah, and I mean, they're going after the prettiest girl on the prom, but she also wants all of her friends to ride in the limo with her. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it's I get the frustration with A-Rod, right? And and as a football fan as, as well, looking at the national scene, like, I'm frustrated with her. It, it, it takes me back to Brett Favre and how happy I am now that I wasn't in, in NFL media when Brett Favre was doing all this crap, because I could, as a fan, I could just flip the channel and turn it off. But now I need to know about this kind of stuff. So I got to pay attention because I get paid to pay attention to it. And it's frustrating. But I also look at actually get paid for this. A little bit. Yeah, we get paid a little bit. <laughs> but I also look, I also look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? One of the teams that I cover for this, for this illustrious network. Yeah. And I remember when Tom Brady was getting ready to come into Tampa. First off, when Tom Brady was getting ready to hit free agency, no Bucks fan wanted to even hear that he would, even consider the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because look at our history. Look at how bad the Buccaneers have been. Right. Why would a quarterback like Tom Brady ever want to come to this team? And I think that's a similar situation where the Jets should be kind of thinking is look at how bad this organization has been. Why would Aaron Rodgers want to continue 
or spend the twilight years of his career with this organization after everything that has gone on over his entire playing career, really, and what he's witnessed outside of it. And we what we told Bucks fans at that time was, you have to understand what this could mean for your franchise trajectory, even if it's only for a short period of time. Now that we're after the Tom Brady window, it's amazing to me. We've got some Bucks fans now who are kind of with going with a good riddance approach to this of, of get out of here, Tom, go away. We never really loved you anyway. And it's it's this it's this idea of loyalty, I think, right? And I think that's really what kind of gets Jets fans because at the root, I think New Yorkers don't like being pushed around and they don't like being messed with by outsiders. And Aaron Rodgers is this the prettiest girl at the prom, right? But she's coming to our prom from a different school, and we don't like that. And, again, she's bringing all of her friends to the party. We don't like that either. And I think that's really maybe where Jets fans are coming from is it's Joe Namath is, you know, homegrown from an NFL sense, and he's our guy, Broadway Joe, and, and all this other stuff. This guy's a mercenary, and we don't want to give the mercenary the crown. The mercenary can come, but we don't want to crown you within our franchise history. I think that's really where Jets fans are having the problem. You know, they, they very well could. And, you know, me as a as a Warrior fans, when it comes to the NBA, uh, kind of had the same feelings when KD joined the Warriors, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, even covering the Raiders here in Las Vegas, there was rumors about Tom Brady possibly uh, coming to the Raiders. And then he ends up retiring. And everyone in Raider Nation, I'm not going to support the team if Brady's there. Look, man. You ain't had very good quarterback play for a long, long time. And I'm talking about Jet fans. You ain't got no opportunity to be picky right now, right? I mean, if you have an opportunity to go get one of the best quarterbacks that have done it, I don't care about the situation. You go get the guy. And again, the hangup is not Aaron Rodgers anymore. The hangup is the compensation that the yeah. ex wants back. And so this is the Jets' fault for putting all their eggs in the Aaron Rodgers basket, going out and recruiting all his girlfriends to be in the limo with them. And then, mm -hmm. oh, by the way, uh, baby daddy says, hold on, man, hold on. <laughs> Ain't getting away just like that. You got to go and come with something. And then all of a sudden, right, wait, wait, what? I mean, like, that was should have been done ahead of time. Well before those guys took that plane ride to California to go see Aaron Rodgers, they should have took the plane ride to Green Bay and signed out, okay, what's it going to take to get this done if, in fact, he does want to go to New York? That should have been done. So once he signed off and said, yeah, I want to be there, signed, sealed, delivered, and uh, everyone's having a kumbaya moment. Everyone's having their press conferences. They're going out and getting their A-Rod jerseys. Now it all looks like this is all Green Bay and the Jets' fault. It makes Aaron Rodgers look like, yeah, I want to play. Can you guys just work out a deal? I mean, he he's played this thing masterfully, even though everyone, including myself, gets annoyed by him. He's played it perfectly, and now it's all on the Jets and Green Bay to work something out. And look, there's really no other options for the Jets. Who are they going to go get? Exactly. Who's you left? know that. I think that's the key. I mean, and and to a certain extent, I want to say, look, if you're a Jets fan, would you rather A Rod or Zach Wilson? A Rod or Will <laughs> Levis? Like, like really? Like, right. Who do you who do you want? A Rod or I don't even know who the who the all the remaining. Uh, free agent quarterbacks. Well, they're all. I mean, Jacoby Brissett's got a job. Who else are you going to go out there? And, and Teddy Bridgewater. You want Teddy Bridgewater in New York? Or you want a Rod? But really, it's interesting, Q, because usually this type of situation where a player has already come out or like an agent has leaked it out or whatever they hit they want out of a team. Usually, the the team losing the player loses all their leverage. But really, like you just said it. The New York Jets. They've already signed Lazard. Like Lazard is already under contract. With the New York Jets. Everybody knows that that Aaron Rodgers is coming to New York. If let's say this deal breaks down, let's say this deal breaks down and I don't even know what's crazy this Aaron Rodgers does. He retires or or something like that goes to Miami to I don't know to, to take over to it. Let's say all that happens. Green Bay is not going to be the one with egg on their face. It's going to be right. the New York Jets. So now the team that everybody knows is losing their Hall of Famer actually isn't the one that's lost all the leverage. It's the Jets that have lost all the leverage. They have to now go purchase Aaron Rodgers. And if they don't, they're going to look like the biggest idiots in the National Football League. Yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap on them if they can't uh, get this thing figured out. And so now Green Bay is in a great position of power. You know, hey, give us this. Give us that. We want this, that and the other, because now you're stuck. You did this publicly. You should have been low and, you know, low and slow. Right. And that what they say should have been on, on the down low with the whole situation. And mm -hmm. instead, they publicly courted them. And now they're well, they're publicly negotiating. And that's never good so that's the latest and the greatest when it comes to aaron Rodgers. everyone david harrison myself your mother my mother we're all waiting for the ball to drop with aaron Rodgers, and of course all the fans in new york even the ones who say they're not going to be jets fans when rogers signs on mm. they will don't worry they'll be there cheering them on as they always do so that's the latest and the greatest when it comes to aaron Rodgers. in segment number two we're going to talk about some teams that have actually signed up already signed their free agents and spent some good quality money, David.
Yep, that's coming up on today's episode of Locked On NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked On NFL is brought to you by Built Bar. Built March Madness Bracket is here. We know that you have your favorite bar or you have your favorite puff, and now is the time for you to make that count. If you go to BuiltMarchMadness.com, you can vote for your favorite bracket style. I'm dropping my vote for Lemon Dip Cheesecake Puff because anything cheesecake, anything lemon is amazing. So when you take the two, and you combine them, it's even better. If you want your favorite flavor to win, then you need to go vote for that bar. Support your team, support your bar, or your favorite built puff. And when you vote your for your very favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners are going to get a free box of built products. Not only that, but one lucky Locked On fan, you're going to get a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars and best puffs delivered to your door every single month you got to try Built, the best protein bar on the market. So delicious, you're not even going to realize that it's healthy for you. Covered in 100% real chocolate while packing high protein, low sugar, low fat. And of course, don't forget the real chocolate, right? Got to say it twice because it's that real. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite Built Bar or Built Puff. And while you're there, pick up your favorite box as well. You can vote every day in March. So hop in to support your pick at Built.com. Built difference. Welcome back into Locked On NFL Podcast on this Friday. Segment number two, David Harrison and Q Myers. David's in for Chris Carter, who's out doing Chris Carter type things. And I'm just going to continue to hammer that that, uh, that 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 little message home because, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. It's Chris Carter, and I got to give him a bad time. But we're having a good time here talking about free agency as really the first wave, David, is getting uh, has gotten wrapped up now. It's a done deal, right? I mean, all the big names yeah. have really come off the board. A lot of money has been spent by multiple teams. And it's so funny that you look at these different you look at these different franchises that try to negotiate contracts for long times, a long period of time with these their, their own free agents, and it takes forever. But then as soon as legal tampering period opens up, it's like 15 minutes. Like, yeah, hey, they agreed to this deal. It's a wrap. <laughs> like, wait a minute. How come you can negotiate with someone outside the building? It only takes 15 minutes. But someone yeah. inside the building, it takes months. I'll never understand that except for the fact that, well, they've been doing this for a long time. They haven't just right. started picking up the phone and, and worked out a contract 15 minutes into it. But here we are. So uh, I want to throw it to you, man, and ask you, when you look at the first wave of free agency, and I always caution about building teams through free agency. Sometimes it works very rarely, but sometimes it works. We saw the Jacksonville Jaguars do a good job of it last year. They found their way to the playoffs, and they spent a lot of money in free agency. But when you look at some of the big transactions and some of the teams that have gotten some big-time names, who do you kind of consider and look at as a winner? Yeah, it's funny they bring up the Jacksonville Jaguars because I remember last free agent period, they spent, like you said, they spent a lot of money and they dumped them a lot of money on Christian Kirk. And and I'm yeah. included. Like a lot of people start <laughs> clowning that move. And the Jacksonville Jaguars end up in the playoffs in the AFC, which we all talked about, you know, being just this this stacked conference and nobody was gonna make it to the playoffs because everybody was too good uh to even win a game there. So you got to give credit to them for doing that. Well, the Chicago Bears are kind of doing some similar things, not not signing a Christian Kirk necessarily, but they get Tremaine Edwins, they get TJ Edwards. Uh, they got Deontay Foreman to come in after they lose David Montgomery, but then they also trade out of the number one pick early, which you know I think that was kind of a surprise. And I know that's not free agency, but I think it's all happening right. in the same stratosphere. And I think that move really does kind of impact the way that they approached their free agent plan. So they trade out of number one, they get number nine and some other picks, and they also get wide receiver DJ Moore. So now you got DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, and Chase Claypool. And I'm a huge Darnell Mooney fan, but I said going into the last season, he's not a number one receiver yet. I don't know if he ever will be. He, he, he might just be a top shelf number two for the, for the entirety of his career. And that's fine. You make a lot of money doing that. But I think what the Chicago Bears have done now is they've given Justin Fields three potential filled weapons. None of them are really super proven. DJ Moore, a lot of people will kind of blame the Panthers for maybe collapsing his ceiling a little bit. But they've got three guys that have a lot of potential. There's there's some some ability there, some improvisation ability from Justin Fields. Obviously, you can get creative. I think they replaced the running back fairly well. I don't think they really emphasize that position too much. But then they've also strengthened their defense, and they still have money to spend, and they still have draft capital. And I think that's really a, a good move. We'll see if it all works out. But I think when you look at who's winning right now in the first wave of free agency, the Chicago Bears have improved their team a lot. And with the Packers about to turn it over to Jordan Love and the Minnesota Vikings being an imposter last year, Sorry, Luke. Um, <laughs> and the Detroit Lions, I think the Detroit Lions maybe can be competitive as well. But the Chicago Bears, I mean, I think they've they've on paper and, and again, it's on paper, but I think they've catapulted themselves to where they could be a contender in the NFC North this year. No, I'm with you. And I think that they've done a good job. And the reason why is because what they've been able to do is bring in guys that are young. 
especially Edmonds. I mean, wait, he's 24 right now. He'd be 25 mm-hmm. when the season hits. So they brought young guys in. They spent some big money, but they're not a team that thinks that those guys are going to immediately make them, you know, a, a Super Bowl contender or they're going to make a deep run. They know where they are, right? They know who they are as a team. So because they had so much salary cap space, they did go out and spend a lot of money. They brought in some guys that they say, you know what, we feel like we could build this team around. And being able to trade back, I think that that's a key to this in that draft being able to trade back and pick up a couple extra first round picks and DJ Moore in a very suspect wide receiver class when it comes to even the draft and free agency. Uh, I think that that was big as well. So they know where they stand and they know that, okay, this is the plan. This is how we're going to lay our foundation down. And then on top of that, we're going to be able to build on it in, in April during the draft and then even next year in the draft. So I think that what they've done in Chicago, they've done it the right way. You know, there's some teams that just try to, you know, just go and put the team together all the way in free agency. And every fan base wants teams to do that. Right. I mean, I cover the Raiders and everybody is screaming to the mountaintops that they haven't signed anyone big. They have. Look, they've got a lot of holes. Right. They got a ton of holes. So you can't just go fill everything in free agency. That's the way to just not get it done as far as I'm concerned a team that I do think has done really well and they did it the right way as well is San Francisco I think the 49ers have done a really good job they went and signed uh, Hargraves Javon Hargraves from Philadelphia and they gave him a ton of money so that normally goes against everything that I say gave him a ton of money and he's an older cat but they have a really good team built so now it's like they're not just dependent on him to be the best guy on the on the field but they want him to go in there they gave him a lot of money because they could because they have a team. So that's really how you should use free agency is go and have your team built primarily through the draft and then be able to plug and play a guy here and there. And if you have to spend a little bit extra money for that guy, fine, because your expectations are to make a deep run. San Francisco's expectations are to make a deep run each and every year because they have a built-in team. It doesn't matter when their defensive coordinator leaves, they lose one every single year, but it seems like they still have a really good defense, right? Because they have their foundational guys already built in place. So I think San Francisco has done a really good job uh, as well, just kind of filling a few holes here and there in free agency. And I'll tell you what, uh, I know we're not talking about free agency losers, but I think running backs in general are free agent losers because, man, they are getting signed left and right. But they're not making a lot of money, which goes back to the devalue of the running back position, which sucks for them. Uh, But, I mean, it's just kind of the nature of the NFL in 2023. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, I mean, it's kind of weird because this position is basically doing it to themselves because every year we're finding third, fourth, fifth round running backs that are coming into the league and they're making noise. I mean, Rashad White, third round pick out of Arizona State for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ends up being the number one running back for for Tom Brady and the Bucs. You know, not the greatest uh, season in the world, but that's just uh, one of the latest examples so as excited as like Rashad White is right now to be to be doing that when he hits free agency, that actual trend is going to hurt him uh, in his his earning ability. Same thing with safeties. I mean, safeties are, are devalued uh, almost every single season. We see safeties just kind of sit uh, in the free agent market and waiting. Um, my, my my the last one I want to talk about here in this segment, Q, uh, and and it pains me to say this. Typically, I'm talking about Ross Jackson, locked on Saints host, and his New Orleans Saints stealing all of the players that I want off the draft board <laughs> this year. The Atlanta Falcons, another NFC South team, locked on locked on uh, Falcons host Aaron Freeman is having a lot of fun talking about these players because he's taking every free agent. I I, I, I cover two teams, <laughs> so I had a list of free agents for both teams, and the Falcons are taking all of them. David Anyamata, Caden Ellis, uh, which not a lot of people actually knew who Caden Ellis was from the Orleans Saints. He's a guy that I wanted the Washington Commanders to potentially look at. Jesse Bates was kind of a pipe dream for, for either of my teams, but yeah. still a guy that I was very attracted to in free agency. The Atlanta Falcons got all of them. I went on. Uh, his show, Aaron Freeman's show, recently talked about Taylor Heineke because he's one of my favorite players from the locker room with the Washington Commanders who recently signed with his hometown, uh, Atlanta Falcons. And I just, I have to, I have to give him credit. I have to give the Atlanta Falcons credit for doing what they're doing. I obviously agree with pretty much every move that they're making. And again, when you look at the NFC South coming out of being the worst division in the NFL last season, I think every team is trying to take strides. The New Orleans Saints went out and got David, uh, Derek Carr. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went out and got Baker league, Mayfield. Nine years and people still don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> Baker Mayfield, who might be better than David Carr. Um, <laughs> and then the Carolina Panthers moving up to number one to get, you know, who they hope yeah. is going to be their, their future franchise quarterback and CJ Stroud. But I think the Atlanta Falcons are also making their claim to be the next winner of the NFC South division. And, and I'm here for it. I love the competition. You know, I would say that I would agree with you 100% with Atlanta. If they went and made a move for Lamar Jackson, if they that, went and yeah. made a move for Lamar, hey, Atlanta, you ain't got nothing to lose. Go mm-hmm. ahead and make the move. 
Make it happen. I would love to see, and I'm just being selfish. I would love to see Lamar Jackson in the ATL. I would love to see him uh, playing in that dome, wearing that jersey, reminding me of a young Mike Vick. I mean, man, I'm just, I'm fired up just thinking about it. I know it's not going to happen. I know it's a pipe dream, but I would love to see it. Hell, I'd love to see him playing in Las Vegas. I know that's not going to happen, but man, I'm telling you, uh, the whole situation with Lamar Jackson, we talked about Aaron Rodgers at the top of the show. The whole situation with Lamar Jackson still cracks me up and, I get the principle. They don't want to spend the, the guaranteed money. But, man, that is a dude. That is an yeah. absolute dude. And so it kind of irritates me that, well, in a wait-and-see type approach when it comes to Lamar Jackson. But I do agree Atlanta's done a, a good job, you know, put, putting together some some nice free agents in their free agent class and see what happens. That's going to be an interesting division once uh, once the draft is over. I want to see how it all looks, how it all shakes out and what the quarterback situation looks like and what teams we think are the, the best teams in those divisions. But, again, I'm going to hold my judgment until after the draft. Coming up in segment number three, we're going to talk about some free agents that remain free agents and, well, which ones intrigue us and which ones don't. Again, free agency, sometimes it's fool's gold. A lot of times it's fool's gold. They're free agents for a reason, but we'll talk about it coming up in the segment three of the Locked On NFL podcast after we tell you about our good friends at FanDuel. And it's coming down to the home stretch of the NBA season, especially out West. If you're looking at the Western Conference, man, every team has to win games, you know? So if if they don't, they can find themselves out of the playoffs. So now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's America's number one sports books, n- sports book. New customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe secure and it's super easy to use then you can bet on everything the money line points scored in the game how many three balls are going to be drained and you know that's all they do now is shoot threes so uh, there could be a very high number of threes knocked down in the game hell in a quarter hell in a half they knock down the three plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn about more make every moment more with fanduel an official sports betting partner of the nba all right here we go segment number three of today's locked on nfl podcast on this friday edition david harrison in for chris carter i'm q myers and david we're going to close this thing out talking about some free agents that are still available some guys that intrigue you and they may not be uh the top of the top you know the first wave of free agency is basically in the books all the big time names have already put paper to pen but or pen to paper however you want to say it but uh, what's a name or two that you have out there that you're still intrigued by, like wondering where this guy's going to end up? I mean, Lamar Jackson is, is a great conversation. You brought him up at the end of the last segment. I mean, I, I, I do think that he ends up in, in Baltimore, but that's that's an interesting conversation. I think Odell Beckham Jr. might be the next most interesting conversation. And I, I don't know if Jets fans really hate the idea of bringing Aaron Rodgers in. I don't know how much they would hate or love the idea of bringing Odell Beckham uh, in with him, and I know obviously the cap money, the money situation, the cap room, and all that stuff would have to get figured out. But uh, you know, as as Kyle Krabs uh, famously wore the, the 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 salary cap shirt, the, the salary cap is 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 manageable. Everybody can manage that. The New Orleans yep. Saints have proven that uh, over the years. So, I mean, if I'm Odell Beckham Jr. and I'm looking for a team where I can make a splash, because you're probably looking at a one year deal, I think that's probably the smartest way to go. Even though you are getting a little bit older, and then you want to try to cash in on your last contract the following season. The New York Jets make a lot of sense because the Buffalo Bills, they've made some moves, but I don't know if they're really getting better or just kind of treading water at this point in time. They have some obvious flaws that are keeping them from reaching the top of the AFC uh, and even getting to the Super Bowl, let alone winning a Super Bowl. And if you're the New York Jets, bringing in Aaron Rodgers is kind of your opportunity to try to threaten the Buffalo Bills for that division crown. And Odell Beckham gets to go back to New York and – you know, he's he's about the petty, so he would love to show the Giants just a little bit more by playing in their home stadium that's now his home stadium. Right. But they're, they, they've been missing out all this time. Um, the other team that was interesting to me as he was going through his, his recovery was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That was a player, or that was a team he was connected to a lot last season when everybody thought maybe a team would sign him and kind of stash him for the future. But uh, with Baker Mayfield there now, I don't know if, if the Bucs are really going to be an option for him. So right. the Jets, and I know the Cowboys are a huge, uh, huge rumor for him as well. Yeah, no, I can see the Cowboys for sure. I don't know, man. Odell Beckham, I, he, you know, he's such a talented dude, and we saw him. He was on his way to a Super Bowl MVP when he tore his ACL last time he played, and yeah. it sucked. And it's just one of those things, man, when you get injured and you get injured again, it's just kind of who you are at that point. And so I know that he's kind of bulked up a little bit. I know his workouts were great. 
I hope the best for him. I just don't know. I feel like he's going to sit out there and wait a little bit. I think that he wants a, a, a multi-year contract, and I'm with you. I don't think that he should get a multi-year contract. I think you should give him a one-year deal and prove it, prove that you can stay healthy. And again, uh, nobody likes to hear that, but it's yep. the nature of the beast. We know that this is a business, and that's just how everyone is treated. And I think he tweeted something the other day, and I don't know the exact thing, but it basically was a reference to, wow. <laughs> you know, like he was basically surprised of what's been going on. I think reality is kicking in like, hey, man, you're not the OBJ that was making the one-handed catch when you were a member of the Giants, right? Yeah. Now you're an often injured Odell Beckham Jr. And so that's just kind of the nature of the beast. But I like him as a player. It will be interesting to see where he goes and see if he can help a team be an extra, you know, an extra wide receiver, maybe a, a, a good two or a great three, you know, but he's at this point in his career, he's definitely no longer a one. You know, one guy I wanted to focus in on was linebacker Bobby Wagner. And I know he's a little bit older. Uh, of course, he did some good things with the Rams last year. I was actually surprised that he was he put in the season that he did with the Rams after uh, leaving Seattle. But he had a hell of a season. And the reason I'm intrigued by him, and I'm kind of surprised that he's still out on the open market, is because the linebacking class in the draft coming up is not that deep. It's not yeah. that strong, right? And so uh, you kind of want to go get a guy if you're a team that feels like, you know, you just need to bolster that linebacking room. You want to go and get a guy that you know is what he's going to do. And it's 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 funny, and, and you know better than anyone because you covered Tom Brady when he was uh, with the Buccaneers. At some point, you wonder, all right, so when when is it going to drop? When is the talent going to all of a sudden drop off? When is he all of a sudden going to go from having a fastball to not having that fastball anymore? It seems like Bobby Wagner still has it. I'm assuming he's probably going to have maybe one or two more years of of really good linebacker play. I just think that he's a guy that teams should jump on right now because, again, if you go and look at the draft and the talent coming out, there is some dudes, but there's not a lot of dudes. It's not one of these draft classes where you're like, man, if you need a linebacker, this is where you go get them. That would be the cornerback position. Cornerback is deep, linebacker not so much. So Bobby Wagner is a guy that I'm kind of surprised is still out there. Um, I'm sure that there's some teams that have been contacting, but I'm interested to see where he ends up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I know that Seattle is, you know, I talked to Corbin Smith, host of Locked On Seahawks recently on my Locked On Commander show to talk about uh, a different linebacker, one leaving Seattle, going to Washington. But he he talked about Bobby Wagner after we recorded that episode. And and I guess the feeling there in Seattle is that they, they think that that's kind of an imminent thing and that they're looking forward to that. So hopefully, you know, if that's what he wants, if that's what the team wants, hopefully that works out. Should have never let uh, him go to begin with, you big dummies. Ab absolutely. <laughs> I think they're learning. I think they're learning that lesson. Um. The last free agent that I'm kind of looking at, like, it's a little bit of a less of a sexier name, so I won't hit on it too long, but offensive lineman Dalton Reisner, guard. I was in love with him coming out of the NFL draft. I know now he's best known for pushing Brett Rippon on the sideline during a Broncos meltdown, and that's unfortunate for him because he's a really good dude in general. Uh, but I cover two teams that could use a guard, you know what I mean? So so Dalton Reisner is a guy that I have my name on, and that is kind of indicative of honesty, Q, because, again, not a sexy name. We're just getting into to wave two of free agency. You were talking about before we started recording. This free agent class, honestly – hasn't really been all that sexy. You want to dive into that? Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing, man. I, I kind of look at the whole body of work and realize that there's not a ton of huge names that even moved around, right? I mean, of course, we're waiting for the Aaron Rodgers shoe to drop. That'll be a by way of trade. We're waiting for Lamar Jackson. But as you mentioned, we all believe that he'll end up back in Baltimore. But I mean, outside of that, there's not really all of a sudden the big fireworks that we were used to even a year ago when, you know, Devontae Adams gets traded, Tyreek Hill gets traded, Russell Wilson gets traded. All the, You know what I mean? Like, all it's like, boom, 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 boom. It was like the 4th of July, but it was in March. And now all of a sudden you kind of look up and you see some names. You're like, yeah, that's a good player. Yeah, that's a good player. Like even Orlando Brown. Look how long it was before Cincinnati pulled yeah. the trigger on Orlando Brown. Normally an offensive lineman that's a big-time offensive lineman, he ends up getting signed immediately. Actually, I was surprised that a guy like Orlando Brown got out of Kansas City after they traded with Baltimore for him. But they're like, yeah, you weren't even really that good. So we're not going to give you all that money. Go on and get it somewhere else. And Cincinnati said, hey, we'll, we'll give it to you. So Cincinnati yeah. got him. But it just to me, there wasn't it wasn't the big splash of, oh, my gosh, that team is killing it. We mentioned Chicago's done a really good job. They brought in some young talent. So I think they benefited from knowing that they're not a – uh, you know, a, a championship level team right now and that they got a lot of work to do in the draft. But besides that, man, it's just I look at the whole body. Like, I mean, when you're talking about DJ Moore, Chicago won the wide receiver battle because yeah. they had DJ Moore included in the in the trade that they had with Carolina. It's like, wow, DJ Moore is the best wide receiver. Jacoby Myers signed with the Raiders and they're like, yeah, that's the best wide receiver that was left. And I was like, really? It was a yeah. 800 yard receiver, six touchdowns. Good player, good guy, but he was the best guy. So I was just I, I feel like that the the the, the class of A level free agents wasn't really 
A level free agents, if you know what I mean. It might have been B oh. level that were uh val- you know that was kind of uh, lifted up to A's because well a default because there were uh, there were no real A's out there. So this has not been the best free agent class that we've seen in a long time. No, absolutely. I mean, NFL fans, we've had to look at some unconventional areas to find entertainment in this first first stretch of, of the offseason. I mean, Lovey Smith, if not for Lovey Smith, if Houston's got the number one pick, you know, that whole storyline basically probably kind of evaporates. Aaron Rodgers is a weird deal all by himself. Lamar Jackson, I mean, how many times has an MVP quarterback become uh, a you know a, a tagged quarterback short, but not exclusive, able to talk to other teams? And then even Derek Carr, like if the way he left Vegas isn't the way he left Vegas, how much attention is that story getting? compared to how much it got. I mean, it's still a quarterback. It's still a move, so it's going to happen. Right. There's going to be attention, but I think the, the the attention given to it was elevated because of the way uh, that he was leaving Vegas. So, yeah, just a really unconventional type of offseason. Still entertaining, thankfully. Still, still enough going on to keep everybody's attention, but it was just kind of weird because, like you said, there's just no like traditional, like, this dude is just really good and he's going to go somewhere else. They're all happening because of darkness retreats and, you know, <laughs> uh, non or completely guaranteed contract. Like, it's just It's just weird, man. Yeah, it's just not it's just not what we're used to uh, each and every year. But that's OK. Again, I think and we mentioned it at the top of the show, really, uh, the best way to build a team is through the draft anyway. Free agency should be just to, you know, fill a hole here and there where yeah. some teams try to build their whole team through free agency. And that's a recipe for disaster. It gets the fans fired up. But, you know, if you want to satisfy the fans, you may end up sitting with the fans. And that's not something any NFL GM yeah. or head coach wants to do so uh, that's going to do it for today's show uh just touching on a couple free agents that we are looking at that are still out there and available but for the most part the big splashes in free agency is already a done deal well david thanks so much for filling in sliding in for chris carter as we all know he's out doing chris carter type things let everyone know uh you know what you got going on the different shows that you cover the different teams that you cover and where they can find you yeah, locked on Bucks, locked on Commanders. That's those are the two teams that cover the Buccaneers and Commanders. Commander Country and Bucks Game Day are the two websites for Sports Illustrated Fan Nation. Then on Twitter, if you want to hit me up there, D Harrison eighty two is is the is the tag. Uh, appreciate you letting me fill in for Chris here. Good luck to him on all of his Chris Carter type things, as you put it. Oh, uh, yeah, man, he ain't doing nothing, man. Chris Carter's type things is just shenanigans, man. He's just he's a he's a shenanigan with a red solo cup, man. So don't worry about it. you. you look, look, he, <laughs> we gonna kick him out the club. <laughs> We kick him out the club anyway. We're going to kick him out the club sooner rather than later. But, David, no, great job. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, make sure you go check out all of David's work. And uh, he's he's doing multi-shows, man. He's holding it down. Uh, you can check me out on Locked On Raiders each and every day uh, talking about the Las Vegas Raiders. And it's always a plot twist when it comes to the silver and black. So you can check me out on Twitter at your boy Q254. I always put a link out to the show every single day so uh, thanks again for making the show your first listen each and every day remember to subscribe or follow for free on youtube wherever you listen to your podcast to get the latest locked on nfl podcast and of course we'll be back here on monday updating you with everything going on in free agency and everything on the nfl the show is brought to you by fanduel.com part of the locked on podcast network your team every day